In the liturgy, there is the opportunity during the adoration of the Holy Cross to use the ancient prayer of the reproaches. For those of you who have done the Stations of the Cross over the course of Lent, you may recognize some of this. But they are the cry from the heart of Almighty God to His people. My people, what have I done to you? Or how have I grieved you? Answer me. Because I led you out of the land of Egypt, you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Because I led you out through the desert forty years and fed you with manna and brought you to a land of plenty, you have prepared a cross for your Savior. What more should I have done for you and have not done? Indeed, I planted you as my most beautiful chosen vine, and you have turned very bitter for me. For in my thirst, you have given me vinegar to drink. With a lance, you pierced your Savior's side. I scourged Egypt for your sake with its firstborn sons, and you scourged me and handed me over. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? Or how have I grieved you? Answer me. And it goes on, as God says, See what I have done for you. How beautifully I have poured out my life for you. And you, you turned on me. Can you not hear the ache of the pain of the heart of Almighty God that loves so much and is so little loved. And on this Good Friday, so strangely called good, and yet it is good for it is our salvation, we hear Christ from the cross he pours out his love for you and for me. I've been told, you know, back when uh, when I was a newbie priest, you remember that uh, the movie came out, The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. And so many people went and saw this movie and were touched. I know one police officer in uh, Exeter, where I was at the time, that actually went and watched it over and over and over and over again. He bought DVDs when they came out and handed them out. He used it as a, work, as a method of conversion. I know uh, there's... I don't remember his name. There's a guy named Kevin who's an actor in movies and stuff. Kevin James, is that his name? He watched, the, he watched the Passion of the Christ one Good Friday and it transformed his life. I've now heard from other people, you show this to teens today, they laugh. Not our teens, of course. But they laugh. There's something lost. Something different. Our culture has rejected the idea that what we've done to Christ is from our sins. If you've listened to um, the CD that we, we put out, I think, last year, um, and it's on Formed as well, where it's, uh, the, the glimpses along the way of the cross... The speaker there, Father, speaks about when um, he was a young boy, he was brought to the Stations of the Cross. And he said, I knew from an early age there was something wrong with the world. It wasn't all my fault, but it was my fault too, he says. It wasn't all my fault, but it was my fault too. Our sins nail Jesus to the cross. Our sins 
pierce his head with thorns. Our rejection of him is spitting in his face. And the beautiful thing is, he willingly receives it all because he loves us. Because he loves us. I think about how often the Eucharist is, is uh, blasphemed and sacrilege happens as people take the Eucharist for black masses or, or not knowing any better, they just put Jesus in their pocket and, or stuff him in, uh, in a missalette. And it made me wonder, why does God allow this? Why does Almighty God allow himself to be so abused? And the only thing I can come up with is because he loves us so much that even amidst all the pain of that abuse, those moments when we come and we show our love for him, when we come and show our solidarity for him, it must be all worth it must be all worth it when we come and we receive Him into our bodies, into our souls with great love. And He says, yes, this is what I made you for. I made you to be my tabernacle. He says, I would endure this over and over and over again if I could have just your love. This is the cry from the cross, I thirst. He so longs and thirsts for our love. And then those last words he speaks from the cross in today's gospel. It is finished. A better translation would be, it is consummated. The consummation of the marriage between God and humanity. He is so in love with us. We come to Good Friday not to listen to uh, some recitation of the execution of a man or even of God. We come to Good Friday not because we need to re be reminded of the brutal execution. We come to Good Friday because we come to see the incredible love of God. This is how far he is willing to go. This is how much he loves us. He sheds every drop of his blood. I think about those people in my life who have loved me greatly. Those people, starting with my parents, what they put up with over and over, over the course of many years. The pain of my mother through nine months and then giving birth. The love that has been shown to me over all these years by my parents, by friends, people I've been in love with, people who have been in love with me. And it's amazing to think God loves me more than any of them, more than all of them. God loves you infinitely more than all the people that have loved you in your life. When I was growing up, Whenever I do something wrong, my parents learned very quickly that the way to get to me was not to punish me, but to say, either I'm disappointed in you, or to grab me, put me on their lap, and hold me and say, you know, it hurts me when you do that. They knew I couldn't stand 
not having their love. They knew I'd do anything for their love. And God says to us today, your sin, yes, this does this to me on the cross, but I did it willingly to take you to myself. What won't we do for love? What won't we do for love? God showed there's nothing He won't do for love. May we return the favor.